Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. Today the church celebrates the birth of John the Baptist. I'm going to read just a little piece from Exciting Holiness. The biblical story of John, the son of Elizabeth and Zachariah, begins even before his birth. His leaping in his mother's womb is seen as a great alleluia in anticipation of the birth of his Redeemer, and the good news of Jesus Christ is related in all four Gospels as beginning with John as Christ's forerunner. He seemed to have had a predestined role akin to that of the Old Testament prophets, particularly in encouraging the people of God to live lives worthy of their calling and in imminent anticipation of the coming of the Anointed One. In the tradition of the early fathers, John was seen as endowed with grace from before his birth, and consequently the Church has always kept the celebration of this day with great solemnity. And so today we remember John the Baptist. I'm going to begin with a hymn, My Song is Love Unknown, sung by the choir here at St Mary's. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Mm. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Mm. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, mm. so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Today's psalm is from Psalm 85. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reading from the Old Testament is taken from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion. Herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Our second reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, beginning at verse 14. On the Sabbath day, Paul and his companions went to the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, then give it. So Paul stood up and with a gesture began to speak. You Israelites and others who fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt, and with uplifted arm he led them out of it. For about forty years he put up with them in the wilderness. After he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance and for 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king, and so God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. When he had removed him, he made David their king. In his testimony about him, he said, I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart, who will carry out all my wishes. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a saviour, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had already proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but one is coming after me and I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals on his feet. Mm -hmm. 
Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 57. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed, and immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was freed, and he began to speak praising God. Fear came over all their neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered then and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Today's canticle is called A Song of Peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations, and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us. In your Spirit, you have made us your own. And so, Lord, we pray for the Church. We pray especially this day for the Church of St. Mary's and St. James. We name before you, Lord, Kim Brown, Debbie Rastel, Arthur Broadbury, Eve Pierce, Ilsa Perlmutter, Nora Lee, the whole Delia family, Tim Crump, mm -hmm. 
We pray, Lord, that you would make our hearts respond to your love. That, Lord, you would receive our praise. And that you would hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray, Lord, for our Queen Elizabeth. We pray for our government, for our Prime Minister Boris. We pray, Lord, for those who serve on our local councils. We pray, Lord, for those who work in supermarkets, in hospitals, in care facilities. We pray for our police force, for our ambulance crews, our fire brigades, and all those, Lord, who work in public office. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and for those who are in need. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Lord, this day for John the Baptist, for his witness. We also, Lord, give you thanks for all those who have prepared our own hearts to receive Jesus. Lord, make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Lord, receive our praise and hear our prayer. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born, and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Saviour, by the preaching of repentance. Lead us to repent according to his preaching and after his example, constantly to speak the truth boldly, to rebuke vice, and patiently to suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. You may have heard me mention on Sunday this wonderful book that was given to me by Pookie, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. And I just want to leave you with one little phrase in this wonderful book. It says, life is difficult, but you are loved. And I hope as you travel throughout the rest of this day that you remember that, that even when life and circumstances are difficult, you are loved. I'm going to close with a piece from Jesus Christ. Taste and see that I am good. This command contains an invitation to experience my living presence. It also contains a promise. The more you experience me, the more convinced you become of my goodness. This knowledge is essential to your faith walk. When trouble strikes, the human instinct is to doubt my goodness. 
My ways are mysterious, even to those who know me intimately. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and thoughts higher than your ways and your thoughts. Do not try to fathom my ways. Instead, spend time enjoying me and experiencing my goodness. And so remember, when life is difficult, you are loved. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.